Welcome to the Seniortopia Show, where you'll get ideas for planning your ideal retirement and encouragement to confront the challenges that go along with aging. And now here are the hosts of the Seniortopia Show, Jerry and Julie. Thank you, Luke. And hello to you, dear listener. What Seniortopia dreams have you been dreaming lately? On today's show, we are going to talk with Glenn and Peggy Matthews. They have a lot to say about their own Seniortopia dreams, which includes some fairly typical plans like traveling around the U.S. and other countries, fishing, and organizing that photo collection. But they also have some more unconventional dreams involving bicycles, weight training, and chainsaws. Uh, Not all in combination, of course. Another interesting aspect of their lives is that Peggy is already retired and Glenn is still working. We ask how they decided on the timing for Peggy's retirement, how Glenn is preparing to retire, and how they both plan on staying active and engaged post-retirement. Our interview with Glenn and Peggy starts around minute seven. So if you want to skip right there, go ahead. But if you're here for the whole kit and caboodle, don't touch that fast forward button. Before we get into the interview, Jerry and I talk for a few minutes about the Holiday Inn retirement option. What's that, you ask? It's where you check in as a full-time guest at a hotel, where you get cleaning services, free breakfast, and more for a third of the price of your typical nursing home. What's the catch? Listen on and you'll find out. There's an article uh, that we found in Senior Housing News. Holiday Inn versus nursing homes. I guess the the point of the article is that it's cheaper to stay in a Holiday Inn than to stay in a nursing home. Is this the basic idea? Well, here's the, so this gentleman, Terry Robinson, posted on Facebook, no nursing home for us. We'll be checking into a Holiday Inn with the average cost of nursing home $188 per day. There is a better way when we get old and too feeble. I've already checked on reservations at the Holiday Inn for a combined long-term stay discount and senior discount. It's $59 a night. Breakfast is included. Uh And they have happy hours in the afternoon. Yay. So this post received 145 million Facebook views because this is a hot topic. This is something that people are concerned about. And the more that I read, the more that I thought, I hope, I really hope that senior living providers read this not only with, you know, how ridiculous, but also with, there's a lot of really valuable information here about what people want. They don't want to spend all of their money on housing. They want to be able to do other things. It also seems that there's a great deal of confusion between the nursing home and the other varieties of housing that are out there. I must tell you, most people still refer to it as the home. And of course, that makes me crazy. And then I start to overeducate everybody. But (laughs) it's where people don't know. We may think that people have really gotten a handle on what are the differences between assisted living, independent living, the nursing home, memory care. We may think this, we in the senior living category, but it's big, it's broad, and it's confusing for most people. And so I think that This article brings that home, and the gentleman who wrote this for Senior Housing News kind of says that at the end of the article. In the long term, senior living is moving in the right direction to quash this retiring to the Holiday Inn idea. But in the short term, it seems the industry could be playing the game better to educate consumers and improve the image of senior housing and, and attracting new residents. Mm. So if you have that many people responding to we're moving to a Holiday Inn, that seems like a great deal of fabulous research for senior living providers to latch into and read deeply and call Terry, the guy who wrote the first post, and say, hey, talk, talk to us some more about this. What else? 
how how are you going to have services in the Holiday Inn outside of the free breakfast and the happy hour? Have you thought about services? Can we talk to you more about that? You know what I would do? I would invite Terry and have him come to Leading Age and talk to all of us a little bit. Oh, that's a really good idea. For those you know, who don't know, Leading Age is? Leading Age is a nationwide organization that works with the providers of senior care across the continuum to do better and take better care of their residents by learning more and seeing the very progressive groups out in the country who are doing new and different things to serve seniors better. And it's a really big, it's just a big convention that you guys all go to. Well, you were they, saying, bring this guy in as a speaker at the convention. Yeah. They, they have an annual show in the fall that is very good. Yeah. They also have a, a wide variety of educational programs for senior living providers. Very but um, this, I think this guy is on to something. Yeah, and I would like to point out that um, Jerry uh, did some over-educating about the different types of senior living on episode nine of the Senior Topia show. So, <laughs> like, check that out. <laughs> no, you did a really <laughs> nice job going through the different levels of care. So, and I know we will do it again. So, oh, goody! Everybody's now so excited. Yes. Hot dog. More of Jerry <laughs> leaning on, waxing poetic about senior living. Today, we are interviewing Glenn and Peggy Matthews. Disclaimer, we have, Jerry and I have both known Glenn and Peggy for many years. They have an interesting pre-retirement situation going on between the two of them. And so that's part of what we want to talk to them about. And they were also a part of some of our very earliest conversations when Jerry was first thinking about how, how can I get my friends to be more prepared for what's coming at us? And so uh, not that we're any of us experts at this, but we have been thinking about some of this stuff for a while. So we're really excited that you were available to talk to us today. It'll be fun. Thank you. Absolutely. So gang, which city are you living in these days? Roseville, Minnesota which is a northern suburb of Minneapolis, St. Paul. And how cold is it today? We woke up at 38 degrees. I think it hit 45 so far. Well, then the snow will melt. That's cool. Yeah. (laughs) We're hoping. (laughs) Yeah. We should should specify it's the very end of April, so they're having a long winter this year. Oh, my goodness. Well, it can only get better. There you go. There yeah. you go. We don't want to take the snow tires off the vehicles until after Easter. <laughs> yes. Things like a, a good rule of thumb. <laughs> and you leave the chains in the trunk for a while <laughs> just after, after that, just in case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Miss that northern atmosphere. Yes, indeed, I do. Okay, so now we get into the more personal questions. Can you tell us how old each one of you are? That came out. Boy, that was really (laughs) nice. How old are you both? I'm 62. I'll be 63 next month. And I'm 65. I married a younger man. Woohoo! You cougar, you. Yeah, woo. But I got to retire first. And you have retired. I have. It's been, it'll be, it's been three years in April that I retired. You're our, you're our hero, Peggy. Yes. (laughs) And how about you, Glenn? Are you contemplating so I put my notice in December 31st of the end of this year? You did? What so, does that mean? Well, you have to work until the last day of the year to get your stock allotment because we're an employee-owned company. If you work for the year, then, and we just uh, got notified that our stock went up quite a bit. Have we mentioned that the Senior Topia show is looking for patrons? (laughs) (laughs) Well. (laughs) How'd you like to be our first patron? Okay. And I guess because we're talking to Peggy and Glenn, we can assume that they have a life partner. Yes. Go through this adventure with. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. How how long have you guys been married? 
It, it'll be 38 years in September. Wow. And we're, we're taking a nice uh, vacation to Russia to celebrate. Wonderful. Very exciting. I just want to say that I've known Peggy and Glenn for quite some time. And whenever I am with them, I think it's a great partnership and a great marriage. And the respect that I see between these two people for one another, it just makes me smile every time I think of it. Well, thank so, you. That's you. very kind. It's, uh, it's just great to see. And I really, I appreciate seeing that. Not only that, but as you can tell, since they're planning a trip, they're constantly planning fun things to do. So they're fun to be around. And we like to call Glenn Adventure Glenn because <laughs> he's always planning new adventures. All right. Yep. And so he, some of the, the different memberships that we have. So we go to the Science Museum. We have a membership there. And so... They had the, a Star Wars thing, a gaming thing last month. So we were there checking that out. We have the Bell Museum that just has a, a mastodon that is like 15 feet tall in their front window. So mm. we belong to them. We are at the State Fair Foundation. So we go to the State Fair a couple of times a year. They're probably one of the largest state fairs in the nation. And I then, was astonished at the size of the state fair fairgrounds we went to i was in minneapolis last weekend so uh we went to the conservatory Home park yes what a fantastic place just beautiful mm -hmm. well i'm glad but, you could come and enjoy our little city too i did i did i'm sorry i interrupted your great list of what we do yeah we go to the history theater probably once every other month and the last one that we went to go see was uh, Stewardesses. Northwest mm -hmm. Airlines started here in the Twin Cities. And so they were talking about the problems that the uh, discrimination against the women mm -hmm. stewardesses. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very good history on how they came all about it in the 60s and 70s and then up into the the 80s and they had Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the play and Gloria oh. Steinem actress in there and so it was pretty good wow that would be fun to see they should show that on delta airlines on their little <laughs> <laughs> so we can get a handle on the whole thing any uh any kids uh no children but we do have nieces and nephews very we've, good we've been very fortunate with health um that we can go and do these things and we don't have a lot of physical problems um so far uh, so we enjoy, we know that at some point in our life, we won't be able to do this. So it's, you know, got to do it now. And you yeah. guys, I mean, I know you, you talked about going to Russia, but you've been all over the world. Where else have you been? Germany, England, Scotland, Ireland, Israel. Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah. Um, Australia, New Zealand. Hawaii with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Peru and Chile. Did and a lot. Jersey. Of, yep, in Jersey. Jersey. And we've been to a lot of the major cities in this country because of professional organization travel that we did in the past. So we've been very fortunate and therefore partly the reason of no kids. Um, we like to go and do and enjoy ourselves. And that wasn't part of our picture when we started out. Peggy, you were saying a couple of minutes ago that you're you're both feeling great now and feel like you could keep going like this. I believe you do a lot of exercising, don't you? Uh, yeah, I made it a point to take care of myself because there were five brothers and sisters in my family and three of my older siblings all died before the age of 60 and they did not take good care of themselves. And I just have made it a point that I walk every day. I am a long, long time member of the YMCA and I go there at least four or five times a week. I have a personal trainer that I see twice a week to motivate me and to make me hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no pain, no gain. But yeah, I, I try to make a point of the exercising and we try to eat healthier. We've pretty much done away with breads and pastas and uh, not totally we still do that but 
we limit ourselves to some of those very heavy duty kinds of foods that we shouldn't be eating. So fruits and vegetables, a lot of protein, and we try to try, try to make that happen. Although I'm a big lover of ice cream and frozen yogurt and frozen custard, and that's my, my big downfall. But we try to make that fit in too, and I just walk extra those days. Very good. And do you, do you uh, take Glenn on your walks with you, or do you make him stay home? Well, you know, it's funny that you asked that a few weeks ago. I said to Glenn, okay, what are you going to do when you retire? Are you going to go walk with me every day? And he said, yes. Excellent. So now that it's out there and it's (laughs) recorded for posterity, he's going to go walking with me every day. um, I will say walking for me, although I'd love to do it, if I didn't listen to my audio books while I'm walking, I would be very bored. So I, uh, through our local library, I download audiobooks and listen to them when I'm walking and working out. And it's fabulous. I just love it. And it's something I wasn't able to do when I was working. Because we live in Minnesota, there's all these lakes. And so we pick a different lake to walk around every once in a while. So we walked around Lake Phelan, which is a three mile walk. And we did that in an hour and we weren't out of breath. So I think it's going to be good. Both Minneapolis and St. Paul appear to be very walkable to me. Lots of places to walk that are unexpected. I was kind of blown away that you could be right in the heart of the city and still feel that you were walking in nature. And it was, it was beautiful. I mean, things were starting to spring and, and look a little greener. And so it was lovely. It's, it, it really is such a nice city. So much to see and do there. And they have great um, bicycle trails everywhere. So and I think snow melts. Well, people do the, in the snow, they have big tire bikes, fat tire bikes, whatever uh-huh. they're called. And they're biking all the time. Um, I was so going to ask that, you, Glenn, weren't you uh, doing a lot of biking? I rode my bike to work last week. Yeah, that's great. How often do you do that? I try to do it a couple times a week. You, do you have a special bike for winter or? I'm not going to do, no, not in the snow. <laughs> he only does it when it's nice outside. Yeah. I did His put bike. fenders on the bike so I don't get wet stripe up the back when I'm riding. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's good. a good idea. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go on to the next question. Tell us a little bit about your housing situation. So okay. our housing situation is we live in a rambler, so we try to make not many steps into the house. Our what's, house a, what's a rambler? A rambler house is a single level house that has everything on the same floor. It's funny how different types of housing have different names in they're kind of regional. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yep. And we've we've done some upgrades. We put in a new cement patio in the back and bought patio furniture last year. And that'll be fun. We've sat out there a few times. Glenn has built himself a work shed in the back for all of his big tools. He likes to do tinker with tools and woodworking and welding and those kind of things. So he's looking towards retirement and what he needs to keep himself busy. And like Glenn was starting to say, we have everything within walking distance. A grocery store is a block away. The major Target store is like two blocks away. The library is two blocks away. Everything is very, very close. And we were very fortunate to be in a location that we're literally halfway between downtown Minneapolis and downtown St. Paul. So Wherever we decide to go or whatever's happening in the city, it's easy access for us. You two guys use away. the public transportation. Is that yeah. pretty close by as well? That's two blocks away. And they've got a main line that goes down to the, the light rail. And so we can jump on the, the main line bus, takes us down to University Avenue, and then you can go east or west to whichever on the, the light rail. And so it's very easy, good pricing. Yeah, it's uh, it really is a nice transit system. Yeah. Really enjoyable. Um, and you guys, you own your home? Yes, we own our home. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things we made a point of having, even before I retired, it was the house had to be paid for. 
because that's just an extra expense, you know, and now upgrade upgrading the house. In fact, a month ago, we ended up having to put in a new furnace and, and uh, air conditioner. So that's a big oh chunk of change. But we got the high efficiency. Yeah. So we are getting rebates back from the electric company and the gas company. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. And do you guys well, have um, walk-in showers in your house? Uh, downstairs is a walk-in, but upstairs on the main floor, that's a big bathtub. Okay. Yeah, our lower level basement is is built out or, or, you know, it's remodeled. So our entertainment place is down there, our laundry is down there. So as we age, you know, and those steps get to be a problem, we may have to just see what that means in our life. But for right now, everything is good. And we kind of need that exercise to keep us up and down the stairs too. So do you guys see yourselves aging in place in that home? Probably for the, probably for the next 10 years, at least. Yeah. The location is great. Again, like I said, and everything is on the main floor for the most part, except maybe the laundry. We can walk out the back door to the patio straight out. So that's pretty easy. Church is very close. We are very, very involved in our church and our church activities and our church family. So yeah, I think this is where we'll be for in Family is close. My brother just moved from South Dakota to uh, 20 miles from here in Stillwater so that we could be closer together because he's, he's the last living family I have uh, for brothers or, or parents. And Glenn's family lives in the area too. So we have no, no need or interest in moving away anywhere. So what is your vision of your senior utopia? It sounds like you're getting it all lined up. Well, I've got uh, all of our insurance figured out, the long-term health care insurance. We've got our uh, catastrophic insurance taken care of. Uh, we've got everything budgeted for money-wise. So now we just have places where are the, where's the next place to go visit or where to go. And now uh, that, we, because we belong to all the different uh, museums and foundations, that always keeps us busy. We have uh, three or four different movie places that send us free premiere preview movies to go see once every other month or so. And so we're, we stay pretty busy, and uh, there's a lot of stuff that we have planned for when I retire. We got tons of photographs that we got to take care of from all of her side and my side of the family. They said, Oh, you're the oldest one here. You take it. So that's one of the projects I figure because I have a, a workshop now I can do a wood project every month and a welding project every month. And yeah, I don't think I'll get bored. Are these family pictures going back in history through both of your families to yes. kind of figure out, Oh, this is aunt Mabel and she lived in, Yep. Interesting. What are you thinking you're going to do with the photos? That's a good question. <laughs> Somebody in the family needs to take them and keep the family history somewhere along the line. You know, we've, we've got them, we're uploading them to the cloud so that we can share them and that sort of thing. Okay, I wonder so you, you are scanning them and stuff. Yeah, it's just a lot. It takes a long time, and I have to be in the right frame right. of mind, if you will, to start that because it is a long, arduous process. My mom and dad have done a lot with Ancestry.com to kind of put together the whole family picture for us. And I know my mom had a, you know, like everybody does that shoebox or bigger or multiples. Photos. <laughs> yes. Un unlabeled on everything else. And so she's taken a lot of those and started to input them into the interest.com thing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's driving her a little crazy, but it's, yeah. it's been good to have, we've had the names, but now having the faces with them, has been a nice, a yeah. nice extra for everybody. Well, part, part of the hard thing for us now is, our parents and that generation are almost all gone. And there are pictures that we have no clue who these people are anymore, mm. or it's been so long. We don't remember the names, you know? And so the longer we wait, the more we'll forget, unfortunately. True. Yeah. 
Hey, I want to ask, so you guys mentioned a while ago that there's a little age difference, which is leading to this situation where you, Peggy, have retired from work in four, Glenn has. And I guess I'm wondering if you guys could talk a little bit about how's that working out? Is that, was that a good decision? I, I would like, I'd like to hear Glenn's take on it. Like, how do you feel you're still working and Peggy's at home playing with the photos and taking her walks and going to her Bible study and, and you have to go to work every day. How is that? Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine. I want to keep busy and going to work every day. And I tell the guys, I'm just there for the laughs and they never let me down. And I come home and Peggy's got the wash done. She's got the meal on the table most of the time. So uh, no complaints for me. Everything's working out great from my standpoint. (laughs) What about you, Peggy? There are days when I need to fill my time. I'm a homebody, so I like to clean and take care of the house and do the laundry, like Len was saying, and all of that. And that's that's fine. I, I guess I was raised in a family where to just sit around and do nothing is not a good thing. You know, you kind of have to always be doing something. So when I do sit and read a book for an hour, sometimes I feel guilty and I know I shouldn't because it doesn't matter anymore. My concern, talking about retirement and Glenn retiring next year, you know, I've, it's been three years and I sort of have my way of doing things that, you know, I get up and I have, yeah, my schedule and how is that going to change with Glenn being home all the time, which scares me a little bit. He he does like being with the guys and he comes home and, you know, we talk about that. And so when he has nobody to be around every day, what's that going to look like? What do you think, Glenn? What's your, do you think that's going to be an issue? Well, it could be, but we just took a class last month at one of the, Uh, community community centers and they said you've got to find a purpose and then they said to write down the names of all your friends or your contacts and if there are contacts that you want to reestablish, write those and put them on your refrigerator and then make a point of calling one or two of those people on the list every month to make sure that you stay in contact and so I think that was a good good advice for to help me keep up with everybody that I'm friends with. You're pretty social for a male of the species. I mean, what we read and hear is that that this tends to be more of a problem for men than for women to stay in touch with their friends and stuff. But I somehow think that's not, I think you're going to be the ringleader. You're going to be, yeah, getting your friends together and going hunting and going on your whiskey tasting uh, extravaganzas and... We have a lot. He has a lot of men friends at church that are retired um, that, you know, he's, he's taking a week this summer and going fishing with some of the, the those guys. So up north. Up north. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he he's got besides work, he's got those friendships going on um, and he's got some cousins that he has hasn't been able to do a lot with, but they're still working, but at least more on the weekends and stuff, he could probably do some things that he's not doing now. Yeah, we, we just have to figure it out. And we want to do more road trips, you know, just take off in a vehicle and say, okay, we're going to go to Nebraska this week and just check things out. You know, why not? We have the time and we have the interest and we just are hoping that that can work. See the presidential libraries do Route 66. Oh, yeah. The whole list. Oh, wow. (laughs) To do all of this, we have been working with a financial planner for years, and they, you know, kept us on track before I even retired to make sure that that would work for us. Um, So we, again, we paid our house off. That was part of the plan. Um, And now with Glenn retiring early our next issue or or concern is paying for insurance that's a big deal yeah what are you um, so working do? with well right now i am 65 and i have i'm on part a medicare but i'm still covered under insurance with glenn's company which is great because it doesn't cost you know whatever it's cost but next year i can 
I will go on full Medicare and pay for part A, part B and C or whatever. We have to figure that out. Glenn will probably just have to pay out of pocket for a few years. What's that where the company has the option for 18 months? Cobra. So. He'll be on Cobra for a while, maybe, through his company. We want to maintain our doctors because we, you know, have had a few medical things and we like to keep those doctors. That's probably the biggest money concern is the insurance until he retires. You know all about that. That's why you live in Chile. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. And we're going to be trying to get some more um, experts on the show to talk about this because it's a, it's a question a lot of people ask is, you know, how do I handle the insurance between if I want to retire early, uh, what do I do? And Cobra right. is certainly a good option because you'll be how old, Glenn? 63 and a half when I retire. And yeah. so that'll carry me right up to 65. That'll be perfect. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Cobra is not cheap. Right. But it's, it's insurance, which is you can't live in the United States without. And the other financial consideration is um, Social Security, which, you know, does he take it early? I am lucky enough to have a pension, so I haven't had to take Social Security yet. Again, we'll talk with our financial planner and say, what's the best strategy for us? When to take it? How to take it? Should he take it early? And then I can take half of what he gets in addition. You know, so there's a lot, there's options. We just need to be guided in what to do. Mm -hmm. It's interesting when you sit down with a financial planner the first time and they ask you some of the questions and you're kind of like, I don't really understand how this is going to apply mm -hmm. to retirement. And then they start to weave this thing together for you. And um, it's always so interesting when I go talk to my guy, I feel like, oh, hmm, I don't think he's as proud of me this time as he was the last time. And finally, <laughs> I said, when we're done talking, could you just say whether I'm doing well or not? And mm -hmm. he said, well, I don't really like to judge. And I said, I need you to judge. If you give me a gold star, I'm going to feel really good about myself and continue with my good activities. Mm -hmm. but sometimes I walk away and think I'm not doing well. <laughs> well, but you gotta zero. find somebody you're comfortable with, somebody you can trust. Oh, definitely. Somebody that is honest with you, like you were just saying. Be honest with me. What 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 should I be doing? You did a good job of talking about your concerns. Do you have some specific steps you're going to take to other than what you've already talked about to prepare for your senior topia? I still have to work on, I, we've got 60 acres worth of woods that I want to spend a lot of time cleaning up. And that's my goal. And so we were looking at trucks yesterday. So when I'm going to be hauling equipment out there to start cleaning up the woods, then we have to figure out, okay, I don't want to be running a chainsaw without somebody else in the woods with me, just in case something happens. So that's a whole nother part of our retirement that we haven't talked about. That is kind of scary. Yeah, it's a lot of 60 work. Acres. Holy cow. Why does the woods need to be cleaned up? Aren't woods just sort of like disorderly? <laughs> they are. Yeah. But I think that when I was younger, we it was a pasture and we had sheep and cows in this woods and it was really beautiful. And I think that in the future we can plant uh, apple trees and pear trees out there and uh, raspberry bushes, strawberries. We can do grow all sorts of stuff out there in our spare time. Gentleman, yeah. The gentleman farmer. Yeah. Well, I think he, you need some goats. These <laughs> are these are his hunting grounds. So he hunts his deer and his geese in these woods. Gotcha. Uh, retirement homes. Every year, they're building more and more here in the Roseville yeah. area. Yeah. And so there's a lot of options here for assisted living or just regular rental housing that's affordable. So yeah. Roseville's got that on the top of their list, which I'm pretty happy yeah. about. And the, all the bike paths and all the parks and lakes. Yeah. Good place. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's the way it should be. It's nice to feel that way about where you are and how you're preparing to Keep going. Good. You bet. Yeah. 
Any other ideas on how you want to live as you age? There's the old Jerry question. I guess one of my concerns has been because I only have one brother living yet that if something were to happen to Glenn, you know, I would want to stay close in the proximity for that reason. Mm -hmm. A lot of our neighbors are either older or really young, so we don't have the connection we have with the neighbors is really with the older folks that are in their 80s. So it's, you know, they're not going to necessarily be there for us. We try to be there if they have a need, and that's been a nice thing for us. So just what happens, what if, the what ifs if something happens. And mm -hmm. we don't know the answer to that, I guess, until it does. We have friends like you guys, and uh, you'll be there for us, I'm sure. So, Yep, absolutely. you betcha. You know, it's one of those conversations in a in a couple, I think, that makes it tricky because somebody's going first. Mm -hmm. It's yes. just how it has to be, right? Yeah. And so having having an understanding within yourself what you would like to do when that occurs, it's great to have that special partner to kind of kick that around and think about what you'd like to do. The other thing, you know, I, as I'm sitting here listening to you and looking around my little room here is a lot of our friends our age starting to get rid of stuff. We all have so much stuff. Oh, my gosh. You know, how do you start just getting like my reading? I'm starting to say, don't buy any more books. Read what you got and give them away. You know, start getting rid of clothes. Like when Glenn retires, we can get rid of all of those work things and just getting rid of stuff. You know, it's that's very something. freeing. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I think when you guys were here earlier this year, I I had been purging, and uh, I have found painting closets is a great way to purge. <laughs> oh, good. You take, you take the stuff out, and you're like, okay, I haven't seen that for a few years. Let's. Yep. I haven't seen it for a few years, and it, go, it goes over in the pile to go to whatever charity of your choice or, or the, the rummage sale at the church or whatever, but that has definitely been painting has really helped me <laughs> get rid of the get stuff. In those corners and get rid of stuff. Closets when they're behind doors, you don't care. <laughs> right. Exactly. And then all of a sudden you open the door and they are no longer behind that door because they all just fell out. <laughs> but it's uh, it Plus. really is a freeing feeling. It really has, uh, it's really lightened. the. I feel like the house is kind of feeling a little lighter too. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So I, I understand. And I think it's, uh, it's constant purging. Yeah. And the, the other challenge for us as we get older, Glenn and I, and, and probably are not in the work world so much is technology. Oh my just, gosh. you know, Glenn got a new phone a while ago and he keeps, you know, it's just, it's frustrating because you know what you want, but you don't know how to get there. Or the computer, you're getting stuff on your computer popping up and you're like, what in the world is that? And what do you click on? And what don't you click on? And there's that fear factor. You're always going to mess stuff up and okay, for the rest of my life, I'm going to have this, whatever. That, for me, that's a little... There's a little fear there with all that technology stuff, you know, and well, now you don't need your credit card. You just get have pay on your phone. And we come from old school that we still want hands on on that stuff. We still want control. Right. And it's, it's hard. It's uh, I, I have over the last six months really been trying to step up my game technology wise. Julie's going to laugh, but I have learned four or five really big new computer systems for my work and for this whole extravaganza. I'm on Facebook now. Thank you very much. Oh, oh yeah. Very exciting for everybody. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it took me. I, I I'm not on Facebook. I fought that one yeah. for a long time. Uh, but it's useful. You find out a few things more than you knew. I I have found with my new phone, I went to the store and I took the classes that they offered with the phone. And that really helped. I don't know what kind of phone you got, Glenn, but if it was an Apple, 
go to the Apple store. Those guys are amazing. I mean, Was it an the Apple, Apple store. No. I have the Apple. He has the Android. <laughs> Yay, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine the Android store is out there somewhere. <laughs> just rebels no. without a cause. Okay. No, if, if you have an Android, you're supposed to be able to figure it out. Yep. Can't, can't you go on YouTube and learn anything these days? Yes. Probably. Well, this is our first interview with you guys, and we have this list of questions, and we've been asking all of our Slice of Life interviewees pretty much the same questions to get a sort of a baseline. But um, I think you've listened to a couple of the other episodes, and you know we ask the people... Hopefully you'd be interested in us calling you back in, I don't know, maybe six months. And we're kind of thinking of following up on people's progress on their different goals. And you know, you'll be six months closer to retiring, Glenn, and yep. you know, maybe some more ideas about what you're going to do with your time. And I don't know, maybe more ideas about getting rid of some of the stuff in your house and things like that. So we're hoping we can touch base again and, and kind of just watch your progress. Sounds good. Sounds yep. like a fun idea. Yep. It would be, Glenn... be fun to do this face-to-face. -face. Yeah, definitely. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if they're ever all together, you, we, you, you and Jerry can certainly do it. And, and if I'm in, in, in the, the United States, we can set something up for sure. Yeah. Yep. Good. Good. I, I think a list of uh, Glenn's wood and welding projects would be interesting to... I, I would love to know what some of those projects are. That would be a fun part of the conversation. So we kind of need to start creating our own bucket lists. We haven't done that, you know, bucket lists of what do we want to see? Where do we want to go? What projects need to be done? But, you know, when you're retired like I am, it's, oh, there's laundry. I don't want to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I don't want to, you know, you put stuff off because you can. And I guess it's okay. It gets done eventually. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would be your advice, Peggy, for people who are close to retiring? What's the one thing you would tell them to make sure they do to be ready to leave that job and, and go into that next phase? Take care of yourself. Take care of your physical body, mostly, and find a purpose. Find something that keeps you busy and uh, out there, seeing people and being active a little bit. Hey, if you're interested in being interviewed and on one of our Slice of Life episodes, shoot us a message on our Facebook page or website where we have a contact us form. Jerry, what's our target for the Slice of Life? 50 plus, getting ready to make a change in your lifestyle, looking for your senior topia. Yeah. So if that's you, give us a, a shout and uh, we'll see about interviewing you on the show one of these days. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Senior Topia Show. If so, we'd appreciate if you'd leave a review on Apple or Google Podcasts. It will help more listeners find the show. If you have a question or comment for us, there's a contact form at our website, SeniorTopiaShow.com, or you can reach us via your favorite social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest at Senior Topia Show. In your message, tell us how you're making your Senior Topia dream come true or the challenges you're facing. We'll answer every message online and discuss as many as we can on the air. This has been your announcer, Luke Ski. Find me at Luke.Ski slash voiceover and ArtByLukeSki.com. From all of us here at the Senior Topia Show, thanks for listening. Okay, 10-4, no goats. <laughs> <laughs>